All right, so I got both of the machines out. You can see the original Mars on the left and the new Mars on the right. So there are quite a few differences and let's go through them real quick. So they're both on as you can see and the original Mars has a different font on the UI. So it definitely looks a little more friendly than the new one. So if we go to tools here, you guys can see the difference. So the older one is just a little bit more colorful and pronounced, I guess. The newer one is more flat and cleaner. So either way, they're both nice. I do prefer the old one, I think, a little better. Just seems to be more friendly. So as far as the base goes, you guys can see they're practically the same. And there's not much difference to them. Now the resin tub is definitely different. So the newer one is more thinner and I guess can hold probably a little more resin. The older one is just very thick right here and you know much heavier then we go to the build plates and as you guys saw earlier we definitely have a much different build plate on the pro here with this aluminum finished surface where the older one is just has the textured black finish coating just like it is on the top on the pro we have much larger bolts here to clamp it down i guess maybe better for long-term stability that way you level it once and never have to go back to it the older one just has set screws there so i guess that was a little upgrade now another upgrade i guess it would be is the newer one the pro uses linear rail here where the older version uses a different kind of rail system it rides on this edges here i'm not sure which one would be better but i'm guessing if the Pro has the linear rail, that is probably the better and more stable option maybe. They both use optical sensors for the Z end stop. The Pro does have a little bit of a wider profile than the original one. It's a little thinner. So obviously our SD card reader goes to the front on the Pro. And on the original one, it actually goes on the back. So I'm going to flip these guys around so we can see the back. And the Pro cable has a 90 degree, while the older model just has a straight out. Which this is much better because you can you know get it closer to the wall without pushing on the cable here's our usb port on the older one and the newer pro doesn't have anything there so it's just cleaner on the back you just have the power switches so since the pro has the carbon filter we can see that there is this breathing hole right here which this older one doesn't have so that should help us eliminate some of the resin smells and i guess just you know unwanted fumes are more condensed but other than that, as you guys can see, they're pretty similar. Now, another pretty large difference is on the Pro, the power brick that it comes with is actually a 2 amp, while the original one is a 1.5 amps. So the Pro seems to demand a little more power, and that might have something to do with the UV curing also. And I don't know if you guys will be able to tell the difference or not, but I can definitely tell that the Pro is a little quieter than the original. So the fan on the original is definitely more aggressive sounding. The Pro has a more subtle, more pleasant fan sound. But it's not a huge difference. And the cover caps are practically identical, except the Pro comes with the rubber seal here on the bottom. So that's pretty much all the differences that i can tell with these all right so let's get to the rooks that we printed so on each side here we have two pairs from the two printers now here's the interesting part just by looking at them there's not really any huge difference honestly you really have to look hard to even tell so the two over here are from the original printer and the two over here are from the pro and i got a little p underneath them indicating that's where they're from now the thing that i can tell you right away that i noticed is that from the pro everything's a little bit more sharper meaning like the fine details are a little bit more precise or pronounced and i think that has something to do with the new uv lighting in the pro that's a little bit stronger and maybe more accurate and so it's able to reproduce a finer or more precise edging so let's take one from the pro here and the regular ones and the biggest difference you guys can see and hopefully you can see that pretty well is the lettering there inside you can see that the pro lettering is cleaner than the lettering on the other machine so it's not like a huge difference but it's definitely a difference so here we are looking at the front of it so the pros this one and you can see how this the lettering is a little bit sharper the printers are very close in their quality what the pro is capable is a much finer detail so if you have a lot of thin small detailed prints the pro will do a better job but as you guys can see the original mars is quite a impressive printer all by itself now let's go ahead and look at other prints we made so all these prints we're going to be looking at are from the pro and here we have a ball and you guys can see how excellent the detail is on this ball so this is quite a fine print and the printer handled this with amazing accuracy. 
So here we have a little soldier. I didn't take him off the support. You guys can see the quality and the detail. It's quite amazing. And this gun that he's holding, it's got a sharp edge right here. And it gets really thin. And when you can have precision like this, you know, you got a good printer. This resin is quite nice because it's got a little bit of flex to it. So overall, very, very impressive. And the details is what matter. And as you guys can see, the details are excellent. So after that, I wanted to change the resin to clear resin. So I do have some clear resin, but it is not technically clear. It's got a yellowish tint to it. It still looks pretty good. Here we printed this lizard thing, and this thing is quite hollow. It doesn't take much resin to print. And you guys can see it turned out really, really good. And it's just a nice little print. I did break off his finger right here, taking it off the build plate. Something fragile like this, you gotta be really careful. As you can see, the printer has no issue with making very thin and you know lightweight kind of prints. So naturally, I printed more clear prints, and this is a, I guess some kind of pie, but all these are little, let's see, hopefully you can see that, they're little numbers. And the accuracy of the detail on those numbers is just phenomenal. And this thing is quite thin too, so if I actually push on it, you can kind of see it bends. So this resin is actually pretty good for durability. It might not be cured all the way yet, part of the reason, maybe still curing. But here on the bottom, you guys can see the clearness of it. I mean, it's pretty decent. We do have a little pie logo there. So after that, I wanted to print something even more delicate. And this is a very thin walled. I mean, it is ultra thin. I guess this was supposed to be kind of like a diamond, but I just wanted to see how thin I could print something. And it did a pretty good job being very thin, but we had some tears and rips here as it was printing. But overall, it looks pretty good for how thin it is. And it's literally like paper, guys. I mean, maybe even thinner than paper. It's very thin. So after all that clear, I went back to the gray. And here we printed this line. So this line here, I actually sliced myself. It was included on the card, but you had to, you know, put supports in and things like that. So I had supports running through here. You can kind of see where I cut them away. The line turned out pretty good overall. I did have a little line going, some layer line, and the reason I have that is because I made him too thin. He's actually quite thin. You can kind of see there's holes here, and he should have been a little thicker. If I squish him hard enough, I can collapse him quite easy. So that was just my mistake, making him too thin. But as far as the details go, they turned out pretty well. So I wouldn't say that you know this turned out amazingly well, but still, very nice print. All right, so I saved the best for last, which is this uh, Matter Hackers astronaut looking thing. And this turned out very well. So I wanted to see, you know, how the layers stack up on a smooth surface. And you can see here on his helmet how smooth that is. I mean, this has turned out very nice. So this is hollow. You can see that's the hole here that drained all the uh, resin. But I did make a much, well, hopefully you can see the thickness there. A little bit thicker, or quite a bit thicker. I think it was 1.5 millimeters thickness, which made this very stable, thus eliminating any kind of layering because of you know being too soft. And this turned out really, really well. The smooth surfaces are all very nice. So I'm very happy how this turned out. And obviously all our details are as perfect as they can be. I think this print was designed more for a regular FDM printer. So these are all the prints that I did. Now I did find an older model that I printed on the non-pro Mars. And this was this tank here. And I actually kept this. I don't usually keep all my prints because I have way too many of them. But this one I kept because it was so nice and just a cool looking print. And if I share a resin print, I usually like to whip this one out because it's quite unique. So it's a tank. So you guys can see how good the Mars printers are and the Pro would be even more detailed than this. So now that you guys saw all the prints, you can see that the Pro does very well and actually a little bit better than the original print by these rooks that we found out.